Let's talk about the code. I don't need this. I made a 3D cellular automata simulation and released the source code to the public. I didn't expect that some of you guys would actually dive into my code and tear it into pieces. It's a good thing because we're gonna see what made my code slow and how did they make it so much faster. It, it's mind-blowingly fast right now. Uh, let's do a quick summary of how 3D cellular automata works so we understand what are we working with here. I'll use a 2D grid as an example with integer values. In a simulation tick we take a cell and count how many neighbors does it have. Depending on how many neighbors the cell has we can do different things. If the cell was zero we can make it come alive if it had x amount of neighbors. In this algorithm we step through each and every cell, count their neighbors and then do some simple calculations on these cells. Let's take a look on the code I wrote and tear it into pieces. I should clarify though that I didn't find all of these bottlenecks. My community did. Especially thanks to Ledu who made a post explaining why each and every step is slow. The data structure I decided to use was a hash map. The key is a 3D coordinate and the value is a cell value. To get the value of cell at 0, 4 or 3, we just use that as a key into the hash map and we get the value. Very convenient, very easy to use. We're soon gonna see though that this was a big mistake. What other options to a hash map do we have? A 3D array would be actually very similar to a hash map. If we wanna get or modify the cell at values 0, 4, 3, we can just index into the array with these numbers and get the cell value. The reason I didn't use this method is I want to be able to change the bounds of the level at runtime and an array is constant. Okay, oh, okay, so we can use a vec then. We can allocate the array on the heap, use a vector, containing a vector, containing a vector, containing the cell value. This would be horrible to work with because just instantiating the data looks something like this. To access the cell values in this way, we need to access the inner vectors resulting in this horrible code. That's a no-go. What about just using a flat vector? In that case we need to do some maths to figure out how to get a 3D coordinate and map that to an index in this array. Okay, that isn't too horrible, but if we were to resize the bounds of the level, we would need to move all of the cells inside of this vector and I, I can't imagine how that code would look like, so we're not gonna look on that. I was too lazy to consider this option, so I just used the hash map instead. Here is the issue with that. Iterating a hash map is much slower than iterating a vector or an array. The values in a vec are tightly packed together and in hash map I, I'm not sure what that looks like but it's not as tightly packed. To prove that the hash map is slower I made a benchmark. Criterion is a benchmarking tool in Rust, it's amazing and here are the results from that. In this specific context I wrote, indexing into a hash map took 35 microseconds. Accessing a flat vector or a 3D array had similar times of 520 nanoseconds. 35 microseconds is 35,000 nanoseconds. Doing reads on a hash map in this context is 67 times slower than using a flat vec. That is substantial because 3D cellular automata we're doing this millions of times. That's mistake number one, let's move on to mistake number two. Oh, it's empty. I will get some water instead then. The next area of improvement actually blew my mind away. I can't believe I didn't see this bottleneck. Enums in Rust is my favorite thing in the world. It is so convenient to use. Let's take a look on this enum I wrote right here. So in 3D Cellular Automata we have some rules that we can modify. Let's say we want cells to spawn if they have three neighbors. Maybe we want cells to spawn if they have 4 or 5 or 6 neighbors. We need a way to represent that data and I'm using this enum to do that. Let's say we want cells to spawn if they had 1 or all the way up to 26 neighbors. Well writing out all of the numbers up to 26 would be really annoying. So using this variant right here you can just provide a range 1 to 26. That is very convenient. If you're just going to use one number you can use this variant or if you have a more complex rule where you have a lot of different numbers you can specify all of the numbers specifically with this variant. This is very convenient to use but it is mind-blowingly bad for performance. Let's say we're running the algorithm and we need to figure out if a cell should come alive. Let's say the cell comes alive if it has one or three or four or five neighbors. We provide the neighbor count to this method and it tells us if the rule is applied. What are we actually doing here? We're iterating over our numbers and we're doing that four times until we see that 
Oh yeah, it has five neighbors. This rule applies. This happens for every single cell. Imagine if you had 26 numbers in this vector. For every single cell you would iterate this vector 26 times. That adds up when you're doing millions of calculations. The code branches out from an enum, gives us the correct data representation, and then we're iterating over it in, in this case. Let's see what solution Ledo came up with. In 3D cellular automata, a cell can only have up to 26 neighbors. We can represent that with a boolean array with 27 elements. Let's say we happen to have 5 neighbors and we want to see does this rule apply? Well we can just use the 5 neighbor count as an index into the array and see if it is active. There's no need for iteration here, we're just getting the value. I find this really hard to explain but let's move on. Let's see if the boolean array method is actually faster. I made a benchmark with criterion. We're gonna use the best case scenario for this rule enum where we only have one value. How does that compare to the boolean array in terms of performance? In this context when we're using a rule enum this calculation took 2.05 microseconds. The bool array in the same context performed these calculations in 275 nanoseconds. 2.05 microseconds is 205,000 nanoseconds. The boolean array is 745 times faster. That is mind blowing. Look at that excitement. Well, I'm gonna throw that out right now. I converted the numbers wrong. It is actually 2050 nanoseconds. It is only 7.4 times faster. That is not huge, but it is respectable using the best case scenario. I decided to do another benchmark with a more common rule. With a rule enum containing 5 numbers, these calculations took 5700 nanoseconds. The boolean array took 287 nanoseconds. In this case, the bool array is about 20 times faster. This boolean array isn't that friendly to work with though. If we have the rule 0 neighbors, well we have to write True. False, 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 false. That's not fun. This enum representation I made is very convenient and we don't need to get rid of it. Instead, we can make a function to convert this enum into a boolean array. You might have noticed I haven't talked about multithreading yet and that is because this is one of the mistakes I did. I'm a big fan of writing code and then questioning the code you've written and that is something I should have done before I added multithreading. I was adding multithreading with a suboptimal solution that only yields us suboptimal results. If I would have stopped and thought about how do I make the single threaded version faster, I, we wouldn't have this performance issue even with multithreading. Let's take a look on the multithreading code I wrote. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Starting out, what can I say? This is a complete mess. I'm not gonna go through all of this code. We're just gonna take a look on some small parts of this. So the algorithm happens in steps. In one step we calculate the neighbors, using this neighbor data we then calculate the changes that needs to be done and finally we execute on these changes. I thought I would use an enum to track this progress. I boot up some threads to calculate some data and then we wait for that data. We do some more calculations and then we wait for some data. I thought it sounded good on paper to use an enum to track the progress but it actually ended up making the code a bit harder to follow along. What I should have done instead is simply remove this enum altogether and simply block the thread on until all data is received. The reason I didn't do that is because that would make our FPS dependent on the simulation tick. If we have a large slow simulation, flying around with the camera wouldn't be smooth. To solve the FPS issue, we could have just moved this whole function into another thread. That would get us rid of this process step enum. Another point Ledo brought up is that I had designed the code to work within Bevis ecosystem. My code could not run in another game engine and more importantly we can't easily write benchmarks nor unit tests for this application. Making this more modular would have been a good thing. Also what we could have done is to write some unit tests to validate that when we change our code the simulation always produces the same output. Okay here's a random point I just wanted to bring up. All of the knowledge I've learned from this project is something I'm gonna put into the voxel game project. It's back baby! I have decided to spend at least a month just writing optimization code on my voxel project. The lessons I've learned from this video is going to help me out immensely. Stay tuned for that video. Let's move on.
It wasn't only Ledo who improved my code. The stats also made a pull request to my repository. Both Ledo and the stats utilized Atomics in their multithreading code. I'm not qualified to talk about that because I frankly have no idea how they work. But if you're working with numbers, Atomics is something you should look into. I should look into. Issa is also someone that got inspired to make their own 3D cellular automata simulation. And they decided to do all of the calculations on the GPU using compute shaders. When we are rendering our simulation, we need to send all of the cell data to the GPU. Streaming this data from the CPU to the GPU could be avoided if you utilized compute shaders like Isse. And generally GPUs are really fast. If we look on this simulation and then look on mine, uh, well, it's, it's really sad. It is so cool. I will provide links to all of this code down below, including the benchmarks I did for this video. Another mistake I did with my multithreading implementation was premature optimization. The reason my code is so hard to look at is because I was being a smarty pants. In Rust, the handles we have into the threads can actually return data. Here's a quick example code. We just return some data from this thread and the handle can receive it. It's readable, it's easy to use, but for some reason I thought, okay, this might be slow. If we do allocations on another thread and then pass it to another thread, maybe that is slow. I don't know. I thought it's probably faster if we don't allocate any data. So I'm gonna cache some vectors for storing the results. This made the code really hard to read. And at the end of the day, I don't know if this code is faster because I haven't benchmarked it. Let's summarize what I've learned from this experience. Do the simple thing first. Before imagining what performance improvements you can make on the code you haven't written yet, just make it work first. When you've written it, you can then decide, do I need to make this code faster? Can I make it faster? Well, then you should question the code you've written, not add multithreading. You should question it first. You should always measure before you optimize. If you don't measure the performance, how do you know what changes you do actually impacts the code in a good way? At the end of the day, writing performant code probably isn't applicable to every project you make. If you're making a voxel engine or a simulation, then yeah, it, it's probably worth to look into optimization. I I hope you learned something from this video, I surely did. I have realized that this is a skill that I want to improve on. I find it super fascinating, so I'm excited to learn more about writing optimized code when it is needed. That is important to say, when it is needed. Have a good day, bye.